Hello Internet, Big Dave here, and I am cheap. How cheap? Well, I'm so cheap that I was only willing to pay $4.99 for... Dwarfs! Yes, indeed, dwarfs. With an F. Dwarfs is the brainchild of a couple of guys who call themselves Power of Two Studios, and the game normally retails for $9.99. So, what is Dwarfs? Well, at its very base, it's a diggy diggy hole game. Uh, it is a mining style game, but it's nothing like Minecraft or Terraria if those are the first things that pop into your head. It is difficult to explain. It, it is a strategy management mining game. It, it's, it's interesting is what it is. I'm going to do something in this video that I don't really like to do, that I rarely do, in fact, and I'm going to show you the tutorial. Now, I don't normally think tutorials make for good videos, but because Dwarfs is such a particular type of game uh, that I don't think a lot of people have probably witnessed before, unless of course you've seen a video on Dwarfs, as there are many, uh, then I, I think the tutorial is the best way to go so that people can kind of understand, because I could go right into an arcade version, uh, arcade mode game, and I could play, but would you really know what's going on? So we're going to jump into the tutorial, and we will be greeted by the voice of Simon from the Yogg's cast. So let's begin at the beginning with controls. Hello! Welcome to the Dwarf's tutorial. I am Awesome Dwarf, and I'll be teaching you the ins and outs of cave exploring. Well, thank you for that, Simon, unfortunately. So that we can speed through this, I'm going to turn off everyone's favorite IRL dwarf, Simon. And uh, we are going to move through the tutorial and see what we can accomplish here. So what Awesome Dwarf is going to show us is basically how to move our miners around, our mining dwarfs. So he's going to tell us a little bit about dwarfs. Well, dwarfs love gold, etc., etc., He's going to explain that this is a digger dwarf, and uh, yeah, he wants to mine, he wants to mine minerals. And we are going to be given several control type tasks, move the camera around, that sort of thing. But before that, he's going to explain what a quest is, and as he explains what a quest is, we move through it, and now we are supposed to seek out and find the minerals of the map. And there we have it. So we've found the minerals, and uh, now he's going to explain the main mechanic of the game, and that is how to guide your miners. And the way that you guide them is to, to literally draw a path for them. So if we want our miner to go down here and mine this particular patch of minerals, we have to click on him and drag a path for him to follow. Now, if you're particularly anal like I am, uh, you may want to put some turns and things in. You know, if I drag here and then straight down, you notice that the game automatically changes the path to what it feels is a more efficient path. Now, if you don't like that, you can put a, a bend in the path. Release here and then draw it again. Release here and then draw it again and he will move in the more precise manner that you want him to move in, though that might not be the most efficient manner possible. So as our dwarf begins to head towards the minerals and attempt to mine them, man, he's got to mine 10. Okay, well, let's allow our little man to mine some mineral patches and I will rejoin you guys in just a moment. Simon is letting us know that we did excellent work, and in fact, yes, we did. We have mined our ten minerals to complete the first part of the first tutorial, and we are successful. All right, let's take a look at the next couple of missions, because uh, I think by the time we get through the first three or four or so, you will kind of start to understand what this game is all about. So, here we go. Oh, Beard Sense is tingling to the north. To the north. Oh, no. Let's see what Simon has to say about this. And we wasted all our gold on ale to celebrate yesterday. There is nothing we can do to stop him. Indeed, because we have very little gold, we cannot 
tell him to go in any other direction because it costs money to draw arrows. So without money, we can't redirect our dwarf to stop and not mine through this last little bit, releasing all of this water into our camp. Oh no! I can't look! It is a dire situation indeed. I've known the lad since he was born a minute ago! Dig it, dwarf! No! <laughs> Fantastic acting, Simon. So, this is one of the main hazards that you're going to run into in the game. There are zones that contain water or lava, and your dwarfs, your little diggers, can dig into them. So you've got to protect your town hall at all costs, and uh, the way you can do that, at least against water, is you can plant a wall. So if you hold down shift, you can drop a wall, and that wall will successfully dam up, and it will prevent that water from making it through. Uh-oh. What's afoot? My beard sense again! Uh-oh. How did he get there? There is no time! Oh no. So the this lava is lava. loose! Quickly! Stop it like you did with the water! So let's quickly try and to uh, try and erect a wall here. Yes, I did say erect. There we go. So we are safe, right? No, of course not. Lava is a little more powerful than a simple mortar wall, so here we go. Truly stop the lava, we have to create a hole. So what we have to do now is deploy our dynamite. But as Simon is letting us know, it doesn't work without the help of a dwarf. So we can plant the dynamite, but we will need to take a digger and direct him to activate it. And that's not the way I want that fella to go. Okay. Yeah. Run, Digger, run! Oh, please make it. Please. Yes. Powie. Okay, so the lava will eat through the wall, and it will flow instead into the hole, saving our camp. There we go. And we are through yet another of the tutorials. So this will probably be our final tutorial here. Let's take a look. We are continuing to dig, dig, dig. Now he's going to teach us one of the last basic functions that we need to know, and that is how to sort of cordon off a hazard. Because these dwarfs, and especially when you have a lot of them, this becomes the case, they go wherever they want. So imagine if you had 10 or 12 of these diggers, you can't manage every one all the time. Um, what you can do instead is take a hazard like this that they might otherwise get into from the side and you can wall it off. So by creating the stone wall around it, the diggers will not puncture it. There we go. Yep, bottoms up indeed. So. Well, that went a little quicker than I thought, so we'll go into one last tutorial, and this one really does bring everything together, so this works out nicely. I'm a dwarf and a digging. Hey, who's there? It's just me, buddy. All right, here we go. So they're going to explain another of the ma uh, basic mechanics of the game here, and this is the dark caves. So the dark caves are, well, they're where either treasure or environmental hazards might lurk. So we need to explore these dark caves, but I notice I have not a whole lot of money, so I'm going to go over and mine some minerals to make sure that I have enough money so that when I do find the offending uh, environmental hazard that I'm searching for, either water or lava, I'll have the, the money to actually fill in with... Uh, protective rocks. So, here we go. We're going to start making a little bit of money here as this dwarf actually does mine his minerals like a good boy. And 
let's direct our other friend over here. Oh, all right, treasure cave. So he is going to mine through that treasure, and now we are relatively sure that the hazard is down. Yeah. So we will let our little fella dig his way down. And once we discover and sacrifice this dwarf to his cruel fate, uh, we will cordon it off and finish up this tutorial. Oh my god, it's lava. Alright, so again, with lava, we want to build a wall. And then dynamite. And quickly direct one of our little fellas over to blow it up. Yes, we must sacrifice for the for the good of the many. I am sorry, Digger Dwarf, but you will save our carnival tent. And just in time, Digger Dwarf makes the hole which will seal the lava in and allow us, the surviving members of the Dwarf Clan, to mine out the rest of these precious precious minerals. So in order to complete the tutorial, let's finish off by sealing up this cave. And you can save a little money by cutting those corners there. You don't really need anything there because they can't mine in on a diagonal. And there we go. What do you think about that awesome dwarf? Hmm, I am a great dwarf indeed. So, there we go. That's going to do it for this time, guys, as far as tutorials. That's going to do it for dwarfs. Let's talk a little bit about dwarfs and what we think about it. I want to do another gameplay video that is at the actual game, but just based on the tutorial, I'm going to give it a, an initial rating. Uh, and also, I have played a bit of the game. So, let's talk about an initial rating for dwarfs. Uh, I really think this is a unique and interesting game as I, as I steeple my hands and rub them together, and I'm sure you can hear that right in the mic. Uh, so I think it's a really unique and interesting game. Uh, the, the replayability of it, I'm not sure how long the basic mode would last uh, just doing Diggy Diggy Hole, but there are all sorts of other bonus modes. Uh, there's even a carnival mode where you do some axe throwing, all that, although that is a temporary summer festival. Uh, there is a tower defense v version of the game where you actually use your miners, your diggers, to dig the mazes that the NPCs will will walk through and build your you know build your defenses. Um, there's the campaign. There's the arcade mode. There's a lot of replayability beyond just that simple. I'm a dwarf and I'm digging a hole. Uh, there's there's depth here, and I really like that. Uh, so. I think the game has a lot of potential. I do want to see more of the game, and I want to show you more of the game in a second video, in a follow-up video. But for now, what do we think about the game? What do we think about dwarves? I'm going to give dwarves a 4 buck out of 5 rating. Remember, we always rate our games on a four on a 5 buck scale, on a 4 buck scale, because we never pay more than $5 for a game here on Big Dave is Cheap. So, 4 bucks out of 5. That means I would definitely purchase this game again for the price that I paid for it for $4.99. I would not necessarily pay full price for the game, but I did really enjoy the game. I feel like I got more than my money's worth out of it, and I really, really like it. Of course, 5 out of 5 would mean I would pay full price. 3 out of 5 would mean uh, on the fence. 2 out of 5, kind of regretting my purchase, not really enjoying the game that much. And 1 out of 5, I want my money back. Yeah. Sorry about that, guys. I'm a slappy lippy kind of guy. So, dwarfs. I really enjoy dwarfs, and I would say if you can find this game for less than $5, you should most definitely buy it. Stay tuned to the channel for more dwarfs gameplay as we engage in some of the other modes and we give a final verdict on this game. But until next time, guys, take it easy.